First came Disneyland, then Disney World. Now comes EPCOT, a strange sounding name which stands for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. It was built at Lake Buena Vista, Florida, and Bruce Hall went there to get a preview of what EPCOT is all about. Shortly before he died, Walt Disney outlined his most grandiose dream, a city of the future to be called EPCOT. EPCOT will take its cue from the new ideas and new technologies that are now emerging from the creative centers of American industry. It's true it Walt Disney envisioned EPCOT as a heralding city of the future a community of revolution that would set the pioneering standard by utilizing, perfecting, and demonstrating fresh emerging technologies while simultaneously being the literal home for a population of diverse and united people. It was a lofty sentiment that without Walt's guiding leadership quickly became an overwhelming challenge. But nevertheless, the underlying core of his dream stayed true. The Epcot Center, while not necessarily fulfilling that earliest vision, would certainly ensure its original idea directed everything it showcased. Epcot opened on October 1, 1982 to a slew of varying pavilions. The 305-acre park was divided into two distinct neighborhoods. The World Showcase, featuring nine pavilions representing nine different countries, fulfilling Walt's desire of a permanent World's Fair. And at the forefront, the essence of Walt's passion for human achievement and impending enterprise could be discovered in Future World, another collection of unique pavilions boasting the power of American energy, transportation, and communications. Every grand and minute detail of Epcot was Walt-inspired. On the televised opening celebration, host Danny Kay would sum up Epcot's mission statement rather nicely. 21st century's here. It's time for the dream to come true. This glorious figment of one man's imagination. It started a long time ago. Continue to flower and grow. From the marvelous mind of that magical man, now the theme of the dream and the fabulous plan are born and just bust in to get underway. And the 21st century begins today. Epcot, just like its city inspiration, would proudly proclaim the new era. But how would it all possibly function? In spite of the musical words of Danny Kaye, it would seem the 21st century had actually begun much earlier, with the arrival of a most crucial and important modern tool. While it may seem the computers have always been with us, they really appeared on the scene less than an eye blink ago in the age of mankind. Just over 35 years ago, about the time Americans were seeing a fuzzy picture coming on a thing called television, most of the residents of southwest Philadelphia noticed their lights would occasionally go dim. The mystery was solved when it was discovered that just down the road at the University of Pennsylvania, some young scientists were turning on a 30-ton machine with 18,000 vacuum tubes. The machine, which was called ENIAC, was the first computer. It occupied most of a large basement room, and perhaps it generated more heat than light then, but in only three decades, it has unquestionably emerged as the most important tool ever created. A great amount of Epcot and Walt Disney World would have been near impossible without the computer, a complicated tool and a challenge for many to truly comprehend. And since I myself fall in that category, I'll revert to the dictionary definition, which specifies the computer as a programmable electronic device designed to accept data, perform prescribed mathematical and logical operations at high speed, and display the results of these operations. Got it? The capabilities of computers were changing daily during the creation of Epcot. Innovation in this unique world of technology was occurring rapidly, and yet at the same time, computers and the impending age of information was still a relatively novel concept for many. Not only would the Epcot Center thrive and be greatly dependent upon computers, it would honor the computer by enlightening its guests about the possibilities the computer could bring through some classic Disney presentation. So, if Epcot guests were to learn about the complicated nature of computer systems and the vast network of technology required to keep them functioning, who better for the job than a flamboyant and energetic Cockney English chap called Early? And introduce Ken Jennings, better known as Early the Pearly. You 
see my friends the computer makes life easier saves me time and headaches too join the explorers as we take a look at the short-lived computer celebrating epcot attraction the astuter computer review he's got the great big memory like an elephant The Epcot Center was home to a vast array of edutaining areas, but the center of Epcot, the true core of Epcot, was found in the Communicore. As Epcot guests would enter through the gates, they'd be first met by the audio-animatronic presentation of Spaceship Earth, which documented and physicalized the monumental history of human achievement and communications, bringing them from cavemen painting all the way to the technology-driven present. As guests would exit the Spaceship Earth building, they'd have instant access to the Communicore. At the hub of Future World is Communicore, Epcot's community core. Here is your own close encounter with the future, where you can personally participate in a wide range of hands-on activities that may soon apply to your own daily living. Other Communicore attractions will enable you to further explore the worlds of energy, communications, space, and many more concepts from the day after tomorrow. Communicore, both conceptually and in actuality, was the underlying heart of Future World and Epcot. Communicore housed a series of hands-on exhibits and showcases that, just like Epcot itself, was split into two different parts, Communicore East and Communicore West. They both were filled with varying sponsored exhibits that would demonstrate modern technology and forecast bold predictions of what the future would bring. In a way, the Communicore was a particular version of Tomorrowland, the Tomorrowland that Walt had always dreamed of. As you explored about the Communicore, you might possibly encounter a live count of the U.S. population, a true fountain of information, or a space called FutureCom, which was home to a unique and incredibly prophetic musical sculpture called the Age of Information. Now Mom and Dad and Junior can all smart telephone it's amazing all the things it can do as it brings the world closer to you it'll help the kids with their homework it'll hook your home to your office send your heartbeat clear across town it'll give you all kinds of freedom like when you want to go shopping it'll bring the store to your front door it's the handiest thing around and it brings the world closer to you and it's making the world better it's making the world smaller it's giving the world something brand new cause the age of information Sweeping across the nation And bringing the world closer to you However, the pride of Communicore was undoubtedly Epcot's Computer Central. Epcot Computer Central will focus on the role computers play in serving your everyday needs. Epcot Computer Central was where nearly all of Epcot's computer systems would be stored and displayed. Every aspect of Epcot's electronic activity could be controlled and monitored from this space. A massive room full of gigantic modern-day computers. While opening to the public in 1982, Epcot Computer Central's story would start much earlier. The creation of the ENIAC computer inspired steady and extraordinary technological innovation, and in 1951, a machine manufacturing company called Remington Rand would introduce the first ever UNIVAC system. UNIVAC, being an acronym for Universal Automatic Computer, simplified the ENIAC to a more commercial status. It made the possibility of employing this new technology in your own business slightly more reachable. It's really an amazing system, isn't it? Amazing and yet so wonderfully practical. Remington Rand makes four basic UNIVAC models, each of them capable of literally hundreds of applications from weather forecasting to complete business control. Today, UNIVAC is saving time and increasing efficiency for business, industry, and government. And of course, that is the business 
of Remington Rand. In 1955, Remington Rand was acquired by the Sperry Corporation, becoming Sperry Rand and eventually becoming known as Sperry Univac. At Sperry Univac, they were constantly discovering, innovating, and evolving the growing potential of the computer. During this span, the use of the computer within larger businesses was becoming more widespread, and thus, Sperry Univac quickly became one of the most profitable companies in the United States. When the Epcot Center was conceived, naturally, the need for something to really support all the goings-on would be required. And in a place like Epcot, it would have to be state-of-the-art. Enchanted by the Walt Disney World stage, Sperry Univac would sponsor Epcot Computer Central, in addition to providing the needed computer systems. Communicore was officially dedicated as the heart of Epcot in a special ceremony on October 18, 1982, with the Sperry Univac president, Joe Kroger, on hand. The Computer Central is lo located in Communicore, the main street of Future World, at the very heart of Epcot, Epcot Center. Beyond this backdrop, Spur Univac computers are, hopefully, and they better be, hard at work handling the vast <laughs> environmental systems and entertainment attractions throughout Walt Disney World at the Epcot Center. Communicore, with its central location, is the hub of Future World. In a sense, it's also the heart of Epcot Center. For here are the computers that control many of the attractions. Welcome to the heart of Epcot Center. Let me introduce myself. I am Computer Central. I operate and monitor everything at Epcot Center. Wait a minute. Hold on. Not now, Kathleen. Epcot Center covers over 500 acres. How could you do everything? Well, almost everything. That's better. Humans, they are all alike. Epcot Computer Central would serve as a wonderful centerpiece for all of Future World. And rather than hide the complicated systems as Disney had done in the Magic Kingdom, Epcot would be proud of the modern technology it was applying and would present it boastfully as often as it could. Communicore, what is it that you do? Well, we sort of run the highly complex communication, information, and technological systems for the entire Epcot Center. This place is completely controlled and operated from a central computer bank, and that includes lights, shows, and all the audio animatronic characters. Wow. Isn't that kind of a big job for such a little robot? I take a very short lunch hour. I must say, this Epcot of yours seems like a very advanced scientific system. Can you show me how all of this works? About a minute and 38 seconds? Yeah. As you can see, there was a very singular pride in all the technological goings on in Epcot Computer Central. But even more so would be placed in the Computer Central's signature attraction. While the robot Smart One was able to sum it up for a television audience in a minute and 38 seconds, Epcot Center's guests would be able to take a little more time via an enlightening and effects-driven attraction that would attempt to highlight and explain this huge network of computer systems. By way of a little Disney magic, of course. Good morning. Thank you, Jeannie. Along with a dedication of the Epcot Computer Central, I will want to mention our Astuter Computer Review. It's a wonderful show and you'll all get to see it. I believe the show you will see is an excellent illustration of entertainment with a purpose. The Astuter Computer Review was inspired and heavily revised from an earlier concept by Disney Imagineer John Hench that would have originally been placed in Tomorrowland in the Magic Kingdom. Under the working title Alice in Computerland, it presumably would have featured Alice of Wonderland fame in some capacity guiding Disney World guests through the wonderful world of computers. This attraction was tabled in support of a different Tomorrowland experience called Space Mountain. But ideas and imagineering never fully die, and the Alice attraction would be revived in a way via the Astuter Computer Review. The presentation began as the guests would enter onto a ramp that would elevate them to the second floor of Epcot Computer Central. On a level terrace, guests could openly observe the entirety of the gigantic room that held the majority of Epcot's computer systems. A large pane of glass separated anyone from falling in and above the impressive view was a blank space where a video element would be projected. The show began with a series of Epcot vistas being displayed above as a voiceover drolly narrated factoids about how the computers were currently serving the park. 
when suddenly guests get a glimpse of the Rosen Crown Pub in the UK Pavilion, wherein they'd see an eccentrically dressed fellow performing some kind of concert with his monkey named Willie. <laughs> His name was Early the Pearly, and he's played here by Broadway veteran Ken Jennings, who came to notable fame by bringing the supporting role of Tobias Rag from the musical Sweeney Todd to the stage. But at the Astuter Computer Review, he would be front and center. Clearly, this Early the Pearly would be the most suitable representative for Epcot Computer Central. Through some essential Disney imagineering and a very skilled use of the Pepper's ghost technique, Early would be electronically transported and miniaturized into Computer Central, where he would seemingly hop, trot, and dance about the sophisticated computer systems and even the human staff supporting them. The pane of glass between guests in the computer room that was required to achieve the Pepper's ghost effect also served as a sound barrier. This allowed the show to go on continuously without disrupting any of the working cast members below. In fact, most would carry on unaware that the review was even happening above them. As we'll soon discuss, the Studer Computer Review's residency at the Epcot Center was a short one, and thus footage of this attraction is extremely scarce. As far as we're aware, what you're seeing now is the only known video that we have of this experience. I'll link it below in the description, and as you'll soon see, it's certainly worth your time. One of the Astuter Computer Review's most charming elements is its inclusion of a likable ditty by the Sherman Brothers. As Early gets his bearings within Computer Central, he feels a song coming on. This was a Disney attraction, after all. Robert and Richard Sherman, who had previously penned many iconic theme park songs before, were now tasked to compose a singularly Epcot melody that would explain in rhyme the complicated nature of computers. It was called the Computer Song, and it goes a little something like this. You see, my friend, the computer makes life easier, <laughs> saves me time and headaches too. <laughs> he sorts things out, analyzes in a shake. My enormous problem to him's a piece of cake. He's got a great big memory like an elephant. <laughs> Utilizes knowledge without end. That's why I'm a router for me computer. Everybody needs a friend. <laughs> when my work piles up and I'm seeing red, cause I need five arms and an extra head, I find the computer becomes me troubleshooter. He keeps miles and miles of facts on file. My wish is his command. Nothing is a stuta than a computer when I need a helping hand. Let me explain. They keep on top of accommodations, record and update reservations, coordinate telephone operations, and help plan energy conservation. They're really a great financial device. Payroll service is kept precise. They project attendance, then give advice on personnel, food, and merchandise. They're constantly focusing all their attention on matters of safety and fire prevention. They've given efficiency new dimension with numerous examples too many to mention. <sighs> And that's why I'm a router for me computer. Everybody needs a friend. You see, my friends, the computer does the drudgery. Leaves me free for better things. I push some buttons and in and off a mo. What was a sticky wicket becomes an easy go. He's got a great big memory lock and elephant. How he works is hard to comprehend. Complicated computations take him just a tick. He coordinates and tabulates and does it double quick. And that's why I'm a router for me computer. Everybody needs a friend. No need to stand, no need to stand. <laughs> Why a cliché, busking Englishman was the best spokesman for the Univac computer systems running Epcot, we may never know. But in spite of its absurdity, it certainly stands as a piece of purely Epcot perfection that could have only existed within a specific window of time. 
After Early's musical number, his presentation would continue as he introduced guests to Max, the monitoring and controlling systems, and showed how this system monitored and ensured the efficiency of several of Epcot's ride and show elements. Then guests would meet X, the entertainment controlling system, which, even though it seemed very similar, was actually different for some reason. This system helped with the synchronization of many of Epcot's varying show elements, such as audio animatronics. It was at this point that Early would seek the help of one of the other stars of Future World, Mr. Eggs, from the Kitchen Cabaret audio animatronic show in the Land Pavilion. With X as the lesson, Early used the assistance of Mr. Eggs to demonstrate how the computers in Computer Central were responsible for programming the actions and keeping the movement of many of the audio animatronics within Epcot coordinated. And with a snappy reprise of the computer song, Early would transport back to his monkey Willie in the UK pavilion. And that was that. The Astuter Computer Review Show would come to a close. It was a very simple attraction with a very simple aim to show off Epcot's impressive computer systems in an educating and entertaining way. The goofy Sherman Brothers tune via the colorful Early the Pearly added a touch of Magic Kingdom-esque levity to the whole affair, but it slowly but surely became clear that the innovative message Epcot was trying to tell was getting lost amidst the silliness. Outside of Epcot, something else was happening too. The presence of computers in our daily lives was getting bigger and bigger, and yet the computer itself was getting smaller and smaller. The advent of the personal computer made this radical power of modern technology all the more accessible. And even though 1982 was the year that Epcot officially opened unto the world, Time Magazine would negligently deem 1982 the year of computers. But perhaps there was a point Disney Imagineer and Astuter show writer Tom Fitzgerald would recall upon the project stating, This is the show that taught us that the future is a moving target, something we learned the hard way early on. We had been working on a presentation about computers, using the many ways we use them at Disney to soften what at the time was a mainframe story. But by opening day, the personal computer entered the scene and our story was already obsolete. And so, with that in mind, on January 2nd, 1984, Early would enter into Epcot Computer Central for one final song as the attraction would be closed, just 458 days after its debut. This made the Astuter Computer Review the first Epcot attraction to kick the bucket, but also sealed it as one of, if not the shortest, lasting attractions in Walt Disney World. Many would come to know and remember a largely retooled version of the review when the experience reopened soon after as Backstage Magic. The show was largely similar, but would opt for a more informative approach by replacing our trusty host Early the Pearly with a lady named Julie. Max and X were swapped out for a spunky ball of energy called I.O., standing for Input Output, and Backstage Magic, regrettably, would eliminate the catchy Sherman Brothers jingle altogether. In Backstage Magic, Julie and Io would still move around the space in a Pepper's Ghost form and comparable lessons would still be learned. The information was just being delivered to you by someone in a more modest outfit. Sperry Univac would continue to sponsor the attraction and Computer Central, proud to proclaim its particularly important role within Epcot infrastructure. Beijing, when the sun rises here, it will also rise in Mexico and Morocco. This is Epcot Center. And like the real world, it wouldn't wake up without Sperry computers. At Disney, fantasy is a very real business. And everything that helps management run the business runs on Sperry systems. Mickey Mouse is no fool. Backstage magic seemed to stick a little harder with Epcot guests, and for nearly a decade, it would remain a staple of Computer Central. On October 1st, 1993, Julie and Io would take their final bow as Communicore itself would power down just a few months later in January of 1994 to begin its transformation into the much more divisive Innoventions, an area with perhaps similar intentions but notably scaled back. The newly remodeled section of Innoventions East would place a wall from the floor to the ceiling, essentially sealing the Epcot Computer Central off from guest view forevermore. A handful of decor and fixtures that once adorned Communicore are likely still behind that wall today. As for Computer Central, innovation and improvement continued and it became easier and more practical and beneficial to operate attractions locally. So over the next several years, the transitions would be made. 
When Kitchen Cabaret was renovated into Food Rocks, its necessary computer components were removed from Communicore and relocated on site to the Land Pavilion. When Walter Cronkite was replaced with Jeremy Irons amid extra enhancements on Spaceship Earth, its computer components were removed as well. When World of Motion became Test Track, its computer components were relocated as well. And so the trend continued as Epcot Computer Central became less and less the technological heart of Epcot Center, and it became more and more like Epcot's antiquated storage space. These days, Computer Central is still there, and it's still operating a few minimal functions within the park, including things like background music and specific park lighting. To speak with potentially accurate hyperbole, in the year 2020, we carry the processing power of what 1982's Epcot Computer Central held in our pockets. Technology seems limitless, and just like in 1982, new grounds are being broken every day. This is ever true within Imagineering. Disney parks are using computers like never before. Today, computers play a vital role within Walt Disney World, and Imagineering is daily stretching their potential to their ultimate capacities. Whether it be with trackless ride vehicles, or audio animatronics, or motion simulators, or fast pass and ticket kiosks, or seatbelt locks and safety features, or magic bands, or ride audio synchronicity, or projection, or lighting, or music, or turtle talk with Crush! All of it is dependent upon computers, and the parks would be a much different place without them. In fact, the world would be a much different place without them. And certainly, you wouldn't even be watching this without them. And so the words of Early the Pearly ring ever true. Whether it's in our parks, in our homes, or in our pockets, my friends, among many things, the computer makes life easier. And thus, may we always recall fondly that passionate Epcot folly, the Astuter Computer Review. Until next time. We'll see you in the happy place. Bye. Not now, Kathleen.